Okay, let's talk a, just very briefly here about horizontal and vertical lines, mainly like what kind of form they come in. All right, so first we want to graph a horizontal line. Horizontal line can be written f of x equals some number. Uh, you guys may remember calling these constant functions. Okay, so that's a clue. It is a function. Okay, so horizontal line is a function. It certainly passes the vertical line test. All right, but since f of x always equals 3, all we're going to do is draw a vertical, a hor horizontal line at y equals 3. Okay, so y, again, just note, is fixed at 3. How are you going to do this in my math lab? All right, you'll certainly put maybe a point here at your y-intercept 0, 3, and then you can just put a point anywhere else uh, like 1, 3, or you could do the national debt, comma, 3. It doesn't matter. Um, the, but, but the point is you do need two points to draw your horizontal line. Okay, the domain clearly is any x, because for any x that we quote-unquote plug in, what do we get? We get 3. All right, what about the range? What is y stuck at? Y is stuck at 3. And so note here we use curly brackets to denote that we just have one number, uh, which is 3 in the range. All right, what about a vertical line? So a vertical line means X is stuck at some number. And so here we want to graph X equals negative 3. Since X is always at negative 3, all we're going to do is draw a vertical line at negative 3. Okay, again, how are you going to do this in my math lab? Well, maybe put a point at your x-intercept, negative 3, 0, and then we can put a point anywhere else uh, so long as x is negative 3. So I could put the point here, which is going to be uh, negative 3, comma 3. All right, that would certainly be another legitimate point. Okay, uh, Again, like I've been saying, note x is fixed or stuck at negative 3. What do you guys think now about the domain and range? Now the domain x is stuck at negative 3. And so I'm going to use my curly brackets to say I only want the number negative 3 uh, as my domain. And now my range, since we notice that our line runs parallel with the y-axis, my range can be anything. All right, and so my range is negative infinity to infinity. All right, again, going back to the very first lecture on um, slope, bear in mind the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Why? Why would it be undefined? Well, remember the formula for slope? The formula for slope is change in y divided by change in x, okay? Well, if I have a vertical line, my x, my change in x is 0. All right, so I'm getting up here some change in y, and I'm getting 0 in my denominator. All right, can't do that. That's what makes the slope undefined. Whereas for a horizontal line, my y is fixed, so my change in y is 0, and I'm getting some change in x, on my denominator. And so thus for the horizontal line, my slope is indeed zero because I get a zero in the numerator of my slope formula. All right, this is just a summary again of the forms of a horizontal and vertical line. All right, so again, horizontal line is in the form y equals some number or f of x equals some number. Whereas for the vertical line, I get x equals some number.